Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Mother and son shot during a drive-by shooting. What San Antonio police are revealing about the suspect this morning. Nationally, the pediatric bed occupancy is the highest that it's been in two years. I'm Alex Roche in Washington, coming up the latest on what doctors are calling a triple-demic. And a quick look outside with live cam this morning. We're starting cold almost at 50 degrees. Not too bad. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, October 26th, and I bet you even money that we're going to drop into the 40s this morning. I heard that, and we'll go ahead and check in with Mike about that. Yeah, yes. perfect situation for it. Clear skies, dry air, light wind, no wind like we had uh, you know, yesterday, yesterday morning. It was very, very windy, and then overnight the previous night. But uh, yeah, it's great morning, mm -hmm. and as I... Just outside. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That'll wake you up. That's Hi. brisk. <laughs> yes, brisk, refreshing, however you want to describe it. And uh, lots of clear skies out there. Just a fantastic morning. 50 in town, 43 Bolverde, 41 Bernie Stage, already down in the upper 30s up there in comfort. Yes, we will continue to uh, drop down a few more degrees. Going for 45 when it's all said and done. We still have very dry air out there with these uh, dew point temperatures, kind of the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, well down in the uh, 30s and 40s. Enjoy it today. We'll talk about uh, some changes coming up here tomorrow. But anyway, mold is on the moderate side. Ragweed and juniper are both light. Of course, the update account will come out later on this morning. Temperatures here in town, 45 degrees. So again, grab a jacket. But then huge warm up. We will gain basically 30 degrees or even more than that in some cases. 78, absolutely beautiful. So we've got another front that's going to be coming on through here. A couple of more rain chances. Then we'll talk about the weekend forecast. Of, uh, I almost said of Halloween, of October. <laughs> Time flies, and I can't even speak. Anyway, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Seen a few minutes, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a passenger is dead after the driver of a car crashed into a utility pole overnight. Happened around midnight at the intersection of 36th Street and West Commerce on the San Antonio's west side. SAPD says after the crash, the passenger was taken to a hospital in critical condition but died at the hospital. Police say the driver was detained for intoxication manslaughter. A mother and son are in the hospital this morning following a drive-by shooting. Both were found at a home north of downtown on Alamentos, just west of San Pedro Avenue last night. And now police say they may have a shooting suspect in custody. Officers believe they may have found the suspect's truck after it crashed into a home near Calaveras and Poplar on the west side. Investigators say an assault-style rifle was recovered from that truck. They also found a handgun tossed under a bridge. Police are still looking for a second suspect. Now to the growing concern over the triple threat of COVID, the flu, and RSV hitting all at once. As ABC's Alex Prochet reports, 14 states and Washington, D.C. now have hospital pediatric beds at more than 80% capacity. This is becoming a common sight at hospitals across the country. Beds and emergency rooms crowded with sick young patients. We have a 181 bed hospital and last night virtually every bed was full. Doctors telling us the rise is due to something dubbed a triple dimmick. COVID, the flu, and a seasonal virus that mostly affects children called RSV. The good news is for two of the three, we have vaccines that are highly effective at preventing serious illness, COVID and flu. But thus far, hospitalizations have been on the rise. Nationally, pediatric bed occupancy is the highest it's been in two years, with 75% of an estimated 40,000 beds filled. That's a 4% increase from just last week, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We're looking at and we're really tracking healthcare capacity very, very closely across pediatric hospitals. Um, and obviously, if hospitals need help, we will step in and help them uh, to make sure that all kids across America get the care they need. The greatest percentage of visits for flu-like illness are for those under five years old. Patients like five-month-old Bentley Phillips, who spent the night hospitalized with RSV in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It started with the wheezing. He progressed so fast. His oxygen was so low that we don't know what would have happened if we were home any longer than we were. At Children's Health Care of Atlanta, they are still pushing the importance of vaccines, reminding parents that it's not too late to get your kids vaccinated, saying that 95% of the hospitalizations there overnight were for children who did not have the flu vaccine and or had incomplete COVID vaccines. Alex Prochet, ABC News, Washington.
Well, new polls show that higher prices and a possible recession are the biggest concern among American voters. That's not the case for many bankers. A new report indicates consumer confidence says its lowest it's been since July. And the conference board says inflation is the main reason for that drop. Higher prices are forcing some people to curb their spending. If enough Americans do that, financial experts say the whole economy could slow down. Plenty of people who run the nation's financial sector think that too, but some top bankers and investors say they're more worried about geopolitics and international war. We are getting more details about one of the people shot on Monday's shooting at a St. Louis high school. So this is 15-year-old Central Visual and Performing Arts student Brian Collins. His mother says the shooter came into his classroom and fired several shots before leaving. A student then opened a window and several people, including Collins, jumped down three floors to safety. It wasn't until Collins landed on the ground that he realized he had been shot. He was hit in both hands and his jaw. Right now his hand is numb and he's having trouble moving some of his fingers. Collins hopes to be able to draw again. A severe drought in the south is hampering efforts to ship products on the Mississippi River. A new report says the cost of shipping soybeans is up a staggering 300% since July. The dry conditions make it harder for barges to move on the waterway. They have to travel more slowly and carry less goods because the river is shallow and narrow. More shallow and narrow. Some say the drought could not have come at a worse time since it's peak harvest season and farmers are trying to sell their crops. The Woody say this is the worst drought to hit the south since the late 1980s. Time now, 436 and 49 degrees for now. A lot of people prefer to use gas when cooking meals at home. However, there are two main risks with using gas you may have not thought about. And the San Antonio Spurs facing off against the Minnesota Timberwolves again tonight. Why the team may have a little trouble this time due to the injury of a key player. I haven't looked at the uh, incident list right now this morning, but taking a quick gander, as we say, at Trans Guy this morning, 281 at Bitters, a few cars out there. We're not seeing any troubles right now. I will take a closer look during the commercial break. And another look outside with live cam. It's cold out there. Hey, we started in, at 50. It's already 49 degrees. We are dropping. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's about 440. While San Antonio Spurs enjoyed a day off in Minneapolis following their third straight win of the season, the Austin Spurs have tipped off training camp at the practice facility on the city's northwest side. Joining Spurs draft picks Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley yesterday, newest member of the team, 6'11", 235 pounder center Charles Bassey. Remember, he played high school basketball in San Antonio for St. Anthony. He led the Yellow Jackets to the TAPS state championship game schools in 2016. After being drafted by the 76ers in 2021, now he gets a second chance with the San Antonio Spurs. You know, came to games and I mean, we, I, was, I was happy, you know, watch them play, you know, I've, I've been loving it with the organization for a long time. So, I mean, I'm just glad I'm here. Meanwhile, the Spurs have placed Devin Vassell on their injured report. Listed doubtful for tonight's rematch with Minnesota suffering left knee soreness. It was Vassell that led the Spurs to that 115-106 victory Monday night with 23 points. Tip off for tonight's game set for 7 o'clock at the Target Center up in the Twin Cities. After finishing with the best record in the United Soccer League regular season, San Antonio FC got a bye in the first round of the playoffs. Now they set to host Oakland Roots SC in the Western Conference semifinals Friday night at Toyota Field. But did the bye week help or hurt as far as keeping the momentum going? We trained all week uh, to make sure that we're properly prepared. Um, you know, again, the focus was on us. And this week, the focus is on how do we get a result against Oakland. Kickoff at Toyota Field Friday nights, set for 7.30 p.m. One of the big games in our big game covers this Friday night. Number one, Steel putting their undefeated 8-0 record on the line against the 4-4 four four Judson Rockets. This is a neighborhood rivalry since most of these student-athletes grew up together and their respective stadiums, Lenhoff and Rutledge, are just 
five and a half miles apart. Steele started off their season strong with a come behind from behind victory over Brennan and the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022 for the Rockets. They held off Johnson in OT in their season opener also at the KSAT Pigskin Classic. They are two and one in district right now. Still Judson's third in district 27 6 a very much a part of the playoff picture. Judson is a great powerhouse program. They have been for the past a lot of years. You know what I mean? Um, so we just got to make sure we got to do our job and do it right. Still is very good. You know, they're very coached, real coached. And I know they're going to play hard because they don't never lay down, especially because they're going against the Rockets. We have very long history with them. So, hey, and we came up short last year, so we, we owe it to them. <laughs> Kickoff between Steele and Judson in Converse Friday night, set for 7.30 that night. Hmm, friendly competition. Yes. <laughs> Time now, 4.43 and 49 degrees for now. Gas or electric, which do you prefer when it comes to cooking and which is safer? We're going to tell you about a few risks you might not know about. And up next, meet the eight-year-old climber ascending on one of the most challenging summits in the entire world. And welcome back, it's 445. An eight-year-old boy is one step closer to becoming the youngest person ever to climb Yosemite's El Capitan. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, meet the eight-year-old climber ascending one of the most challenging summits in the world, Yosemite's El Capitan. This is an ex epic adventure with my dad. Sam and his dad Joe speaking to GMA from their campsite, a thousand feet up on the side of El Cap's granite walls after completing day one of their vertical climb. The Colorado Springs father and son say they trained for a year and a half to scale the 3,000 foot high rock formation. Way to go. That's two and a half times the size of the Empire State Building, hanging by their fingers or anchors the entire time and carrying water and sleeping gear with them. You have to haul up all of your tent, your sleeping bag, pretty much everything for a camping, tent, camping trip. we still got a long way to go. And we'll have much more on this potentially record-setting climb coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. It is the great cooking debate, gas or electric. A lot of pro chefs tend to use gas. However, as 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris tells us, research shows that gas ranges can come with health risks. Cooking with gas. You just switch the knob and voila, flame. But what about what you can't see? Consumer Reports just tested emissions on gas ranges and found levels of nitrogen oxides more than double the standard for outdoor air set for the EPA. Nitrogen oxides are pollutants more typically associated with outdoor sources like power plants and cars and trucks. But new studies suggest that gas ranges can actually produce these emissions inside your home. For people with asthma or other lung diseases, the gases can make it worse, and they may increase the risk of asthma in children. These gases are more potent with regard to acute toxicity, which means they could cause problems potentially even in the short time frame that people might spend making dinner. That's why if you own a gas stove, ventilation is important. A range hood is best. Turn it on every time you're cooking. And if you don't have a range hood, just open up a window or two and set up a fan that'll help dissipate the gases. If you're shopping for a new range, you definitely want to consider electric or ideally induction. These aren't the electric ranges you remember, and many pro chefs are even using induction models. Induction ranges can get pricey. This Frigidaire is among the most affordable that Consumer Reports tested and recommends. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now, we can report from TxDOT. We only have one incident right now, and I don't think it's showing up on any of these cameras. It's way out at I-10 eastbound at Foster Road, disabled vehicle. Looks like all the main lanes are clear. This might be on the access road. Went and voted yesterday. I'm planning to do so today. Mid-afternoon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people were like, well, the line, yeah. And it, oh, total, it took me like half an hour. So okay. that bad. But, okay, what a great reason to stand outside in line. <laughs> I was going to say, it at least like, it's pleasant. It was yeah. wonderful. I just, yeah, it's like just nice standing there. It, it really was. I yeah. got a tire rotation yesterday, and I was inside the shop, and their AC's on full blast. And I'm like, I'm freezing my buns off. Had to go back go outside. outside. And it was absolutely beautiful. So, Go Love stand, go enjoy the outdoors, mm -hmm. stand in line mm -hmm. for a little bit. So that's yeah. what the Mingo is doing. Oh, yeah, I saw not, your picture there. Not boating, I don't think. No, uh, no, no, but being outside. Being outside. <laughs> right. Just, yeah, so it's just like he's of, been in the bushes and running around and rolling in the yard and everything. And really doesn't care that he's got little uh, 
things, little bits Aww. of uh, flowers on them or something right. like that. So. Mingo. I've never heard the name Mingo before. Really? No. Mm -mm. Mm. Same. Mingo was his name? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> scan the QR code and send in some of your uh, KSAC Connect pictures. Great shot there. Thank you very much for that. All right. Good looking morning. Um, obviously, can't see it yet, but we're going to have a spectacular sunrise. Doesn't come up till about quarter of uh, eight nowadays. And temperatures, it is chilly out there or downright cold. A pair of 39s, Kerrville Comfort, a 41 Bernie Stage, 42 Bulverde, 50 here in town. We're not done cooling down yet. Now, yesterday, of course, we did have clear skies, very, very dry air, but we had the wind, which kept things kind of stirred up. We don't have much of a breeze this morning, so we've got pretty much the perfect ingredients for radiational cooling, including the light wind out there. So that allows the heavier, cooler air to settle down to space, settle down to the surface, and all the heat escape out into space. And here's the other ingredient that we have, very dry air and uh, lots of clear skies. We've got no moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and we had a little bit moving through uh, down to the south yesterday, but this darker shade of gray on the water vapor imagery means once again we're going to have those vivid blue skies. So if you are standing in line to uh, vote this afternoon, it's just like, okay, just look up at the sky. Just enjoy it. We're dropped down to 45 when it's all said and done right around 7 o'clock this morning. And then a big warm up already gained 20 degrees by 11 o'clock, 70 at noon, and we'll top off at 79 later on this afternoon. So again, a 30, you know, what, 34, 35 degree uh, swing in temperatures today. Huge rise in temperatures. We've got the very dry air in place, and that's going to remain the situation throughout the rest of today. So a beautiful day, but notice how the wind is starting to come in here out of the uh, east to southeast, and that'll pull in a bit more humidity. Not like you're going to notice it tomorrow morning, but numbers are coming up and they will continue to come up as we go into tomorrow night. And yes, that you'll notice that's then preceding the next front, which moves on through here. So here's uh, one of the longer range computer models. Obviously nothing going on today. We start off with a lot of clear skies tomorrow. Then late tomorrow night, a couple of showers around here. One thing to take into account, again, this gets painted in with a broad brush, so it's not rain everywhere, but those rain chances will start to move in here in the overnight hours and then Friday morning, maybe even lingering into about lunchtime. Then we're going to start to clear on out, and it's going to be a beautiful day on Friday, and it's going to be beautiful uh, over the weekend. We'll have uh, maybe a couple of extra clouds around on Saturday, but it is going to be very windy on Friday as well well as Saturday in behind the next front, which again is going to get rid of any of that humidity that uh, starts to build back in 70 at noon today. Sunny skies, good looking day and then high temperature up to 78 sunny, beautiful out there. And then tomorrow start off with a lot of sunshine. Clouds increase throughout the day. We will be at 54. So not as chilly tomorrow morning and then get up to a 78 in the afternoon. Front comes through late tomorrow night. Windy on Friday and Saturday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, maybe even a couple of stronger thunderstorms in the early, early morning hours of a Friday late tomorrow night. And then nice weekend, kind of cool Saturday. Good looking uh, forecast for Monday and maybe some rain Tuesday. That's the thing I love about the fronts this time of year. They tend to kind of wipe things out, clear things out, and make for beautiful days ahead. And yes. these are all, you know, the one we had yesterday, Monday, and then uh, this next one, Pacific Front. So okay. it's not like the blast of cold air, just like you said, gets rid of the humidity. Right. Nice and pleasant. Yeah, yeah we'll real nice. Uh, and they're, they're coming from California, so they're more expensive too. Uh, <laughs> True. 453, I'm just kidding. 453, 49 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Coming up next, Taylor Swift's new album is still making moves on the Billboard chart. We're going to tell you how many copies have been sold so far. Well, Steph, you'll be happy to know that Taylor Swift's new album is still breaking records and a new popular series on Hulu is wrapping up its first season. Yes, that's good news. <laughs> For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Took, I would have complimented you years ago. The Hulu sitcom Reboot just wrapped up its season one run. The show about rebooting a sitcom with Paul Reiser playing the creator of the original show. A bunch of scenes take place in a writer's room, a place Reiser tells me is near and dear to his heart. I've learned so much about human nature in the writer's room because it's about collaboration. It's about ego. It's about tempering ego, supporting egos, um, filtering out negativity, uh, bringing out the best of people trying to temper tamper down the worst in people. You can binge all episodes of season one of Reboot now on Hulu. I'm going out tonight.
Taylor Swift's new album, putting up sales numbers not seen in years. Midnight's is the first album to sell more than a million copies in a week since 2017, when Swift also did it with Reputation. That according to the company Illuminate, whose data powers the Billboard charts, Midnight's broke the million mark in its first three days. Right now on Earth, it's almost Christmas time. Marvel getting into the holiday spirit with the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy special, the first trailer out now for the movie, which features a new addition to the gang, Kevin Bacon. The Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special is out November 25th on Disney+. Plus. Disney, the parent company of ABC News. And happy birthday, Bootsy Collins. The funkiest bass player alive is 71 today, while Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak is 76. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 458 and 49 degrees for now. Candidates running in the midterms are making their final push as early voting continues. We'll hear from a write-in candidate making waves out in Uvalde, plus a look at key races across the country. And the family of a local teen who was shot while eating in a McDonald's parking lot gives an update on his condition. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We'll see if things are still pretty calm on the roads. At last check, we only had one disabled vehicle out there on I-10 near Foster Road. We'll talk to him coming up right here on GMSA. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fire burns down a home in southwest Bear County overnight. Why sheriff's deputies think the fire was intentionally set? And from election are heating up with less than two weeks to go before Election Day. Why a race in Pennsylvania is one of the most watched this year. Outside with live cam, it's taken exactly one half hour for us to drop from 50 down to 49 degrees. How much lower could we go? Mike is standing by with your forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, October 26th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. I know starting cooler, we were in the 50s mm -hmm. starting the day and it's expected to drop even more. Mike, I was telling folks on social last night that I saw long lines at tire shops, people mm -hmm. trying to stay ahead of pressure checks on their tires because yep. they may get that little alert on their dash this morning. That's always a good thing this time of year, especially when we start getting a little bit cooler in the morning and uh, make sure you always check your tire pressure when the tires are cold, not if you've been driving around or anything like that. So 50 officially out there at the airport. Got a lot of clear skies, light wind, and very dry air. Those uh, second number and third number, northwesterly at 6 and dew point of 38. And with the clear skies, we've got all the ingredients for good radiational cooling. So we will continue to drop down in the next few hours. We're going to be bottoming out at 45 here in town, then getting up into the upper 70s. So again, a huge warm up. Good indication that we've got some very dry air in place. No change in the aquifer yesterday and mold after some of the rain a couple of days ago did go up to moderate side. Ragweed and juniper are showing up just a little bit. So here's some of the uh, temperatures around the area right now. It's actually down to 37 up the road in Kerrville, 38 Comfort, 42 Balverde, and 46 in Converse. Like I said, not only do we have very dry air down here at the surface, all the ingredients down here at the surface for good radiational cooling, but once again, we've got really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, that uh, darker shade of gray in the water vapor imagery. And what that means is beautiful blue skies again today. It was so nice to be outside yesterday. This morning, yeah, nice to be outside. You've got jacket because it's pretty darn cold out there. And then big warm up today, upper 70s, sunny, just a beautiful, beautiful day. We're going to start off with a lot of clear skies tomorrow. Then the clouds will be increasing. We've got the next front moving on through here overnight into Friday. So we'll have some showers, a couple of thunderstorms around early on Friday. Then it's going to be windy in behind that front, both Friday as well as Saturday. Overall, the weekend looks great. We'll stay on the coolish side, just low 70s on Saturday and yeah, like I said, overall fantastic. Going into Halloween, looks pretty nice as well. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cabasos, good morning, sir. Anything going on out there? Uh, it was a good morning yesterday, Mike. I actually went for a walk in the park, and uh, this morning, things are looking pretty quiet. Uh, as we are getting the morning rolling there, you can see 37 at 410. Not a lot of traffic out there, thankfully. We do have a few folks that are obviously getting their morning started early with us. You can see it there at 410 at Marbach, but I wouldn't say it's anything that you have to rush out the door for. Traffic is relatively light at this hour. So you can see it a lot of these shots from Transguide 
we are off to a pretty decent start, but let's get you to the map because as we are seeing some quiet roadways, of course, we do have those road closures to be on the lookout for as well, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Mark mentioned that stall near Foster Road, and I just want to bring it up here on the map. Still being reported by TxDOT at I-10 eastbound at Foster Road. Not seeing it on the TransGuide cameras just yet, but uh, just be on the lookout for that and make sure you check your vehicle's tire pressure as well as Mark was mentioning. We want to make sure you arrive to where you need to be on time and, of course, safely. Travel time so if you're traveling in the westbound lanes, 29 minutes is what you can expect. So still pretty green from Seguin on I-10. About a little more than half an hour on 87 northbound if you are traveling in from Lavernia. And it's a 28-minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville to the Alamo City. So things are off to a decent start so far, but we'll watch the roads closely and have those updates on road closures in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a man's in custody this morning following a house fire in southwest Bear County overnight. Happened in the 7800 block of Rockport Road near Somerset when Bear County Fire and Lytle Fire got there around 11 p.m. The home was already completely on fire. The Bear County Sheriff's Office was told the fire may have been set intentionally by a man staying at that house. The male was detained by BCSO when he tried to flee the scene. The family told deputies he has started two fire fires two times before this. The house is a total loss. There are no reports of any injuries. More than three weeks since the shooting of 17 year old Eric on his family is asking for prayers that their son survives. They also say they want justice in the case and some sort of change so that this type of shooting will not happen again. Eric on was eating in a McDonald's parking lot when former officer James Brennan fired at Cantu's car multiple times. Cantu's parents say his fight in the hospital keeps going back and forth between medications and a ventilator, keeping their son alive. They explain he was hit by at least four bullets and that a single bullet remains in Eric's heart. Sleeping, what we think is a peaceful sleep, to hallucinations and raising his hands and trying to press the pedals to the car and pushing gun symbols. These are the things we have to see daily that no one has seen. Former officer Brendan is facing two charges of aggravated assault by a public servant. Gantu's family will also be on Good Morning American this morning, saying they not only want justice in the criminal sense, but the civil and legislative as well. You think it was racial profiling? I think. a preset thought about who that person was and how he was going to take care of that problem. And we want justice, yes, but we want Eric to live. We want Eric to live to tell his story. You can watch the full interview on GMA starting at 7 a.m. right after GMSA. In Uvalde, the race for County Commissioner Precinct 2 is heating up. One writing candidate making waves is Javier Casades. His daughter Jackie was killed at Robb Elementary. Even though he never saw himself as a political person, he said he promised her that he was going to fight for changes. Casades says his platform is simple. He's finding to keep other kids safe and for more rigorous police training. I can't promise anything because I've, I've, like I said, I'm not in that position yet. But I'm going to do my best to do my part versus promising somebody that I don't want to make a promise I can't keep. Everybody in the world saw what happened that day, and, and he was in that video as well. Currently in the seat that Casares is running for is May 24th. He has since been placed on leave. And we emailed Mariano Paragas several times to speak about the re-election, but we have not gotten a response back. There are two other write-in candidates for County Commissioner Precinct 2, Julio Valdez and Diana Olvedo Caru. Valdez declined an interview, but you'll hear from Olvedo Caru later tonight on The Night Beat. More voters heading to the polls. Another day of early voting ended with 31,930 ballots cast. It's a little less than Monday. A reminder, early voting runs through November 4th. Election day is November 8th. We have a complete voter guide set up for you right now on KSAT.com. The most highly anticipated debate of this election season, a race that could determine which party controls the United States Senate. As ABC's Alex Perche reports, it was a showdown between Dr. Mehmet Oz and John Fetterman in the Pennsylvania Senate race last night. 
The first debate answer from John Fetterman last night addressed what he called the elephant in the room. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. And I might miss some words during this debate, mush two words together. The Democrat running for Senate in Pennsylvania suffered a stroke in May. Polls show Fetterman's lead is shrinking and his Republican opponent, TV doctor Mehmet Oz, gaining support. At last night's debate, Fetterman would not agree to release his full medical records, saying his doctor believes he is fit to serve. The debate questions were closed captioned on big screens to help Fetterman with lingering auditory issues, which doctors say is normal during stroke recovery. The two candidates clashed on more than a dozen issues, including immigration. We have a catastrophe at the border, and we should not have sanctuary cities as John Fetterman has tried to introduce. I don't ever recall in the Statue of Liberty did they say, you know, you know, take our tired huddle masses and put them on a bus and use cheap political stunts about them. The Senate race in Pennsylvania could determine the balance of power in Washington. Republicans reportedly spent six million dollars on TV ads in the state just in the hours leading up to the debate. With less than two weeks before the midterm election, early voting is huge. In fact, in Georgia, already more than a million people have voted early, a dramatic increase from last midterm election. Alex Pache, ABC News, Washington. Now 10 minutes past the hour, 49 degrees. Twitter is losing some of its biggest users. What new research is saying about a growing lack of interest in the platform. And next, the owners of a beloved San Antonio Mexican restaurant give an update on trying to rebuild after a fire. How you can still get your favorite salsa while waiting for it to reopen. And taking a look outside with a live cam, 49 degrees, definitely chilly out there. You're going to want to grab a jacket and later it's expected to warm up nicely. We'll be right back. 514, good morning, welcome back. This morning, the owners of a well-known San Antonio Mexican restaurant say they still don't know when they will rebuild or even be able to rebuild. Hakala Mexican restaurant burned down back in March after being open for more than 70 years. The owners say they have been exploring the possibility of reopening, but they are facing the obstacles of high inflation and the higher cost of basic products. I can't tell you this today, tomorrow, next year. I can't say what we're exactly going to do, but y'all will be the first to know. And while we are waiting for that answer, Hakala Salsa fans can still get their fix from HEB and soon on Amazon. You can hear more from the owners and their future plans on our website at KSET.com. 514, 49 degrees. We're going to tell you about Samsung's new way to protect your data while your phone is out for repair. Elon is at it again. This time he wants to make the internet more accessible in moving vehicles. We'll tell you when the service is set to launch. Oh, wow. oh, I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. I'm so glad we did this. Edward Jones. If you struggle with CPAP, you should check out Inspire. No mask, no hose, just sleep. Learn more and view important safety information at inspiresleep.com. When do you spray Febreze air? After every flush. In my kitchen, Febreze tackles my toughest odors. After vacuuming, because fresh means clean. I spray every chance I get. Starts working instantly to freshen any room. For Breeze Air. In today's Tech Bites, Twitter losing some of its most active users. According to documents, users who generate 90% of tweets have been in decline since the pandemic. Elon Musk is set to finalize his deal to buy Twitter on Friday. Samsung has rolled out a new privacy feature to protect your personal information while your phone is being repaired. Maintenance mode makes photos, messages, and other private data inaccessible. It prevents technicians from seeing what apps you've installed. And finally, SpaceX says its Starlink for RVs satellite internet service will be available for moving vehicles starting in December. Right now, it is meant for stationary vehicles in remote places like campsites. The new service will cost $2,500 before a monthly $135 fee. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 519 and Stephen has traffic. 
We do, and you know, it's been a quiet morning so far. We did have that stall vehicle off of I-10 mm -hmm. East uh, near Foster Road, but looks like that has cleared out. So let's get a look at the roadways right now. Things have been moving just fine. Uh, there we have a few shots of Trans Guide, and you can see at 410 near Exchange Parkway, it's getting a little bit busier, but I wouldn't say it's anything too bad or anything to be concerned about. So if you're at home, Enjoy the cup of coffee and these view from Transguide uh, right from your living room. But if you do have to head out the door in the next few minutes, just always be on the lookout. We aren't seeing anything major, but what we do see scattered in and around our map are those active road closures. And I want to bring this up really quick as we take it in the map there along Chavano Park. You notice that there are some closures there between 1604 and right there at Hebner Road, and that is because we do have some utility work that is taking place. Now this is going to be ongoing and it will start at seven this morning. Keep in mind it should wrap around six in the evening, so it'll take quite a while. But according to text out that will finish on October 28th. That's on Friday. Expect a single lane closure in both directions again from loop 1604 to Hebner Road. But you know where to find that information. Grab those phones right now. If you're still at home, open your camera app and scan that QR code that will take you directly to our case at traffic page has a full list of the current closures there. And of course, that's always important before you head out the door. So plan that commute ahead of time. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. All right, here's one for the caption contest. Uh -huh. I don't believe the marriage proposal will work out, but I've been wrong before. <laughs> <laughs> I love these two guys right back there with their poses. So and that's, that's supposed to happen cute. Later down the road. What's that? Isn't that supposed to happen down the road? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just a joke. So. <laughs> yeah. I just got it and <laughs> pleading the fifth. <laughs> I just, and again, yeah, just, hi. Um, what a pretty picture out there. I'm just going to, yeah, let the map speak for themselves right now. So, <laughs> anyway, 50 here and down, 41 Bulverde, and down in now mid 30s, Kerrville, 36 degrees, 47 Port SA. Needless to say, grab a jacket. So, we've got, uh, unlike yesterday, we had dry air and very clear skies, but we had the windy conditions. Now we've got still very dry air out there. Dew points are well below uh, 60, down in the 30s and 40s. Hardly any breeze to speak of, and we've got the clear skies. So, all the ingredients for radiation cooling, so we will continue to drop down 45 degrees right around 7 o'clock this morning. And then lots of sunshine, huge warm up throughout the morning. We're going to be gaining about 25 through uh, between morning and noon, 70 at noon, and then up through the upper 70s later on this afternoon, 79. So just about exactly normal this time of year and not much of a breeze throughout the day. Lots of, like you saw, sunshine throughout the rest of today. And then tomorrow we start off with a lot of clear skies. Then we get into the evening hours, late afternoon. We'll start to see some clouds around here. I don't think we see any sprinkles by dinner time, but going into the evening, a couple of showers are possible. And again, this model does sort of a broad brush, but as we go into the overnight hours, we'll have better rain chances than into the morning on Friday. And that will last, it looks like, even through lunchtime, early afternoon, perhaps. Then we clear out quite nicely. So as of right now, it looks great for Friday night football. It is going to be windy, though, uh, later in the day on Friday. And then also going into Saturday, we are going to have a lot more in the way of uh, some, some sunshine around here. I think a few extra clouds on the coolish side on Saturday. And then Monday, we will have uh, more clouds. And still, it's going to be pleasant. Another chance of rain comes in here then by Tuesday and it looks like the middle portion of next week. So I think we're going to be squeezing in the weekend as well as Halloween right in, betwi in between those two uh, rain chances. 70 today at noon. Sunny skies. High temperature makes it up to 79. Again, just a great day. Open up the windows and tomorrow great start. Cool, not as cold. We get up into the upper 70s again. Clouds increase. That front starts to work its way on through here. Then late tomorrow night into Friday, chance of rain early Friday. And it's going to be windy Friday and Saturday. Overall, nice, nice weekend. And trick-or-treating weather looks pretty nice. Next chance of rain comes in here Tuesday. Halloween. Any more comments on the uh, uh, picture? About the picture? No. no. Okay. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're ready for Halloween. Yes. How, you were going to say Halloween? Mm -hmm. uh, the forecast is stinking. Yes. Consistent so far. It is. It is, and uh, I don't think we'll see a big return of moisture as far as humidity until Tuesday. So. Okay. okay. All right. It's we got a break. Grace, it's called graceful out. Thank yes. you, Mike. 523, 49 degrees. <laughs> and coming up next, a favorite Marvel movie director is joining Warner Brothers. Plus, a first look at the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. Film director James Gunn is in the news this morning for projects from both comic book movie universes. CNN's Rick Damagella has a story in today's Hollywood Minute. 
It's got to be me. I've got to do this. James Gunn powers up DC. Warner Brothers has announced the director known for his Marvel Cinematic Universe movies with Disney is joining Warner's as co-chairman and chief executive officer of DC Studios, overseeing filmed entertainment alongside Peter Safran, known for his work producing The Conjuring Movieverse. I just saw on the calendar that right now on Earth, it's almost Christmas time. More from James Gunn as Disney Plus unveils the trailer for the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Gunn wrote and directed the Yuletide adventures of Marvel's misfit heroes, which brings Kevin Bacon into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, playing Kevin Bacon. Yes, you heard that right. The festivities begin streaming November 25th on Disney Plus. And in non-James Gunn news, Imagine Dragons have released a new version of Bones just in time for Halloween. The new spin on the Dragon song was remixed by the electronic duo Two Colors. And degrees. Well, some are worried about a possible recession in the U.S. Find out what is some of the top banks in the nation even more worried about. As the popular electric heating pads are being recalled this morning, they're even being blamed for some injuries. What you need to do if you have one. Plus, we're going to tell you why some of your favorite Coca-Cola products will look a little different starting next year. Higher prices and inflation have many concerned about a possible recession. Why some of the nation's top bankers say they're worried about something else. And looking outside this morning with live cam, 49 degrees, nice and cold. You're going to want to grab that jacket this morning and later on, eh, you might not need it. Avengers Assemble. Everybody's at the desk <laughs> yes. now. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, October 26th. Thanks for joining Slip us. Slip gloss? Mm. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, okay. Oh. Just, do I need it? Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Might be your color. It was You're my good. place. So. Yeah. When are we going to get Sorry. coffee here on the desk? That'd oh, be that'd nice be nice. Have, like, hey. That would be yeah. nice. Well, we do have a full espresso machine down here. <laughs> oh, no, I wish. No. <laughs> no, we don't. I wish. Yeah, we'll Grab nice. a jacket this morning. Yeah. Do you yeah. warm up the car, or is that pushing things? I, I, a little no, bit. I, I did. Not yet. Okay. Did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. Not too bad. Not too okay. Bad. Who goes first? Me. You. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Your yes. turn. You're yes. up. Yeah, beautiful morning out there and got a lot of clear skies. It is definitely on the chilly side. We're at 50 at the airport and 38 is the dew point temperature. Very dry air, clear skies, light wind. Perfect uh, situation to let temperatures drop down even further from where they are right now. And we're already down in the mid 30s up there in Kerrville. 41 Valverde burning stage. Helotus at 48 and 46 right now over there at Randolph. Mole is moderate. This is after some of the rain that we had, and the updated count's going to come out, obviously, in just about a couple of hours. Ragweed and juniper are both on the low side. Great day to head to the pumpkin patch, take some pictures. Not going to be as windy as what it was, especially yesterday morning. Wind uh, very light throughout the day. We're going to make it up to 70 at noon, 77 for a uh, afternoon temperature. We'll top off at 79 later on. Again, nothing but sunshine out there. It's going to be spectacular. Now, the weekend is going to be pretty darn nice as well. Tomorrow, especially tomorrow night, Friday, another front, some rain chances, and then again next week. We'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, after you warm up the car, what do you expect on the road, Stephen? Well, you know what? Right now, my things are quiet, they're nice, and it's a perfect time to take advantage of these roadways. Let's get a quick look around town, show you what the commute is looking like at this hour. 37 at Jones Avenue, uh, 37 at Fair. It's been pretty quiet so far. If you are one of those early bird commuters, you are in luck. Thankfully, no major issues to talk about this early in the morning. Morning, but you know the topic is really going to is going to be those road closures, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But right now, just for a quick look around town, you can see it's just quiet out there. So again, if you are one of those early bird commuters, take your time when you head out the door. Don't rush. Enjoy your morning. Uh, but if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, you're also in luck there. We're pretty much minutes and. Pleasant from Pleasanton on I-37 northbound. Highway 90 looks to be about 30 minutes, so the usual drive time if you're heading in from Castroville on those eastbound lanes. And your arrival from Lytle looks to be about 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So again, things have been off to a great start for this Wednesday morning as we get ready for the latter half of the week. But we're going to watch the road closely and, of course, have those updates on closures in the next few minutes. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. 
New this morning, a driver is in serious trouble after a deadly crash overnight on the city's west side. San Antonio police have arrested him. They say he was intoxicated when he crashed into a pole, killing his passenger. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on West Commerce near Northwest 36th Street. And Katrina, we understand firefighters had to work to get the passenger out of the car. Well, that's right. They say that he was pinned inside that car after it wrapped around this utility pole here. And we have CPS Energy crews still here. They've been here since then working to make those repairs. The police wasted no time in trying to investigate what went wrong with the driver. They gave that man, who also is in his 20s, a sobriety test right here on the spot, then took him into custody. The crash happened shortly after midnight. Now, officers made no mention of any other cars being involved. Somehow, this one slammed into the pole, and police suspect that the driver was intoxicated. Once firefighters got that passenger out of the car, they took him to a hospital, but he died. So far, police have not released any names, but they say that it looks like this driver will face a charge of intoxication manslaughter. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Prices are rising and a recession could be right around the corner. New polls show that that's the biggest concern among voters. However, as seen as Amy Kiley reports, that's not the case for many bankers. And sometimes I only eat one meal a day. Recent polls show inflation and the economy are the biggest issues among voters. But some of the nation's top bankers say they're worried about something else. Everything is going up except our income. A new report indicates consumer confidence is the lowest it's been since July. And the conference board says inflation is the main reason for the drop. I'm taking maybe a week to two longer between haircuts. Higher prices are forcing some people to curb their spending. If enough Americans do that, financial experts say the whole economy could slow down. I think the economy is likely sometime in the next year, year and a half to go into recession. Plenty of people who run the nation's financial sector think that too. Economic conditions are going to tighten meaningfully from here. Remember what the 2008 recession was like for some businesses in that industry? These are stunning developments. Two of Wall Street's iconic names, Lehman Brothers and Merrill Lynch, falling on the same day. But some top bankers and investors say inflation and a possible recession are not their biggest concerns. A group of them has been meeting in Saudi Arabia this week. We'll manage right through that. I would worry much more about the geopolitics of the world today. Specifically, there's an existential risk of war, international war. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Midterm elections are two weeks away, and President Biden is determined to keep the House and Senate in Democratic hands. He has directed the Democratic National Committee to immediately move $10 million to the House and Senate campaign committees. He also offered another $8 million to those groups through fundraising. The Democrats are trying to buck tradition. The first midterm election for a president's party often results in big gains. He's expecting the midterms will be very close. Today, the United States, Japan and South Korea warned that an unparalleled scale of response would be warranted if North Korea conducts a seventh nuclear bomb test. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman was with her counterparts during a news conference in Tokyo. Washington and its allies believe North Korea could soon resume nuclear bomb testing for the first time since 2017. North Korea has been carrying out weapons tests at an unprecedented pace this year, firing more than two dozen ballistic missiles, including one that flew over Japan. NASA is out with new satellite imagery that could show which parts of the Earth are releasing methane into the atmosphere. Methane is an odorless gas, sometimes linked to climate issues. The satellite has identified more than 50 places around the globe that emit huge amounts of methane into the air. That includes places like the Permian Basin in New Mexico and areas of Turkmenistan and Iran. NASA says pinpointing these emissions could help uh, countries identify problems and make changes to help the environment. Time now, 538 and 49 degrees for now. A popular heating pad is being recalled this morning. We'll tell you why and where it was originally sold. Let's go outside with a live cam. And if you step outside, make sure you have that jacket. We're dropping into the 40s now, started at 50.
You guys be safe out there. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 541 in your morning consumer headlines. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has issued a warning about Mighty Bliss electric heating pads, which have been recalled because of an injury risk. The recall covers more than half a million heating pads distributed between July of 2021 and July of 2022 and sold through Amazon.com and Walmart.com. Two hundred eighty-six complaints about overheating, sparking, burning, or other electrical problems. There were injuries in 31 of those cases. Consumers with these heating pads are advised to stop using them and visit the company's website for further instructions. You might notice Coke products looking a little different soon. Coca-Cola CEO says there are plans to add more varieties of cans, bottles, and value packs. The beverage company's already been seeing smaller containers and multi-packs with fewer cans, all in an effort to offer cash-strapped consumers more options to spend less. Even though consumer customers may end up paying a little more per liter when they buy smaller, some are willing to make that trade to get a lower price. The CE also pointed to returnable containers as another way of lowering costs, and consumers would get some money back for returning bottles and cans. And time now, 542 and 49 degrees for now. It's starting to get a little chillier outside. Up next, we have a pet that wants to help you stay warm Aww. at your home. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. The most popular ofrenda design includes three tiers or levels. The top tier represents the heavens and the loved ones you're honoring. Here, you will place their pictures besides images of saints and the Virgin Mary. The second tier represents the earth and its comforts. This is where you will place offerings of their favorite food and drink, including favorite objects from their life. The bottom level is the entrance. This is a place for spirits to cleanse themselves after their journey and their visit. This level also represents the bounty and beauty of earth, symbolized by corn, pumpkins, beans, and marigolds. Like the people they represent, each ofrenda is unique in its own way. The point is celebrating and reuniting with your loved one's memory. Well, Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League and talk about wrapped up snug as a bug in a rug. Okay, going to sleep. Yes, mm -hmm. who's this baby? So this is Saddle. She is three months old and she's a domestic short hair. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, she's a little, she's super chill, but she does have some visual uh, issues and um, so you said basically partially blind, right? Partially blind, yes. Mm -hmm. So when you come out and, and see her and visit her, we want to make sure that she's the right match uh, for your family. We definitely want to make sure that she's going to be living a healthy and loving uh, long life uh, with you. So yeah, come and meet her. But so maybe not the perfect animal for a lot of little kids right. or other or animals a loud in the house. house. Loud house, something yes. like that. Just kind of wants to just take it easy, no yes. surroundings. Yes, definitely. Maybe like the empty nesters, an okay. older couple, someone who is looking to just have a chill cat, as you can see. She's just somebody super... plopped on a lap, watch TV with you, you yeah. know, catch potato. So what y'all got going on? Oh my God, we have so much going on. So this weekend on the 29th, uh, we actually have our uh, Subaru Loves Pet event. Mm -hmm. uh, so our friends at North Park Subaru are going to have a fall adoption event with great prizes and great Subi swag. Uh, and then we're going to have Halloween contest and then our friends at uh, from Thomas J Henry are having bark in the park so that's gonna be at Sunken Gardens from 4 to 9. Oh wonderful okay so yes. lots going on lots of babies to adopt out there as well and if you'd like more information on everything or check out some of the puppies and kitties love the ground in Nacogdoches Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo or the pet smart over there four wins 655-1481 adltexas.org. Now do you thank you dear. Yeah. Wow. 548. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasas. I've had it pretty easy over here, guys. Not a lot to show, and that's always a good thing if you have to head out in the next few minutes. But let's give you a quick look around town. Not sure what's going on there. 281 at Hildebrandt looks like we have a pixelated picture from Transguide, but everywhere else, US 90 at Military, nice and clear. And that's the same case when it comes to these roadways. 37 at Hackberry. Right, uh, really good morning this uh, right now. And you can actually see from these shots of Transguide, we really don't have any issues that are going to cause any delays for the commute. And that is the same story as we take you right to the map. But 
But as I mentioned, the big headline, at least for right now, will be those road closures to be on the lookout for. So here's another one here off State Highway 46 in Comal County. We have striping work that has been ongoing, and that has actually been taking place since October 24th. We're going to see that work continue all the way up until November 4th, according to Techstat. That's quite a long time, but it is overnight, late night owls, early bird commuters plan your commute ahead of time. Nine in the evening at five in the morning is when you can expect the work to take place. Single lane closures in both directions from Old Bernie Road to Bentwood Drive. But make sure you can head over to our website, ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But right now, it's been uh, pretty nice for me. Yeah, yeah, not bad uh, yeah. for a Wednesday. Already yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Week's gone pretty Hi, quick. No. I know. Halloween's coming up. I don't even have a costume ready. You'll work it out. I will. You're pretty creative. Should we have, ask the viewers? What should he dress as? What should Steven? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was Pinocchio, and I, uh, that, that could you know, make a comeback. Make, Steph could was suggesting come it earlier. But, yeah, because of oh. the Disney movie out, so that might I, be popular. Have you ever dressed up as Dracula? Oh, yeah. I, I see That's that. A fun I don't one. know. I just oh, see, I, I see oh, yeah. the Dracula vibes. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and kind of the like the... the very not Bella Lugosi style yeah. Dracula yeah. too. So Those even made my own fangs one time. So. You made them? Yeah. As long as you didn't file them. <laughs> no, no, not my. I <laughs> not, not not anyway, uh, waterflies don't. If you don't like spiders, don't look. Don't look. Did yeah. you carve your fangs out of pecan or something like that? Some exotic hardwood that we don't know about. <laughs> Use fingernail acrylic. Oh. Acrylic. Yeah. Interesting. Where are you going? I'm going over here. Okay. I, I'm, All right. yeah. You just seem I, lost. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which screen I'm supposed to go to over here. So <laughs> anyway, the caption says pretty healthy spider. I just want to know who took the thing's pulse to find out that it was healthy. So <laughs> you can tell from here. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if that, is that a little one that he's got a real close up or is that just a really big spider? Do so. you really want to know? Mm, no. I think okay. a little bit of both. <laughs> Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. Bundle up this morning and we're going to continue to drop down. We're in the uh, 50s right now, even upper 30s in parts of the hill country here in town. We'll drop down to 45 degrees as the uh, sun is just about to uh, come up or right before that. Sun doesn't come up until roughly quarter of eight now this time of year, of course that is going to be changing in a week and a half. Yay. 70 at noon today and then a high temperature makes it all the way up to 79. So huge warm up. Good indication. Got some really, really dry air. Doesn't hold the heat in, but then on the flip side, it does heat up quite easily. Once again, uh, nothing today like yesterday. Just blue skies and sunshine out there. Then tomorrow we start to see the clouds increase and maybe a sprinkle or two going into the evening, but the better chance of rain. Again, this is kind of broad brush, but better chance of rain is going to be going into the overnight hours and early on Friday and a couple of decent showers around here as well. Even a few thunderstorms, especially up to the north. And that's where the right now it looks like the majority of the rain will be. So maybe 10th quarter of an inch from portions of the hill country down to the south and then going up to the northeast is where you can see more widespread Nah, I don't want to say necessarily heavier, but more decent rain up there. And of course, any thunderstorms that may pop up, you could have localized heavier downpours. And that's going to be the situation again, late, late Thursday into the first portion of the day on Friday. So here's what's going on. This is the low that moved by. On, on through here and notice how the upper level wind lines are almost straight west to east. So this is a Pacific front not dropping down straight down from Canada. And so, yes, it does allow temperatures to cool down because of the drier air, but it's not this blast necessarily of cold air. So today, fantastic. Tomorrow, clouds increase with this southwesterly flow. Here's the next low that scoots on past here, gives us some rain chance pulls down some drier air again. Weekend looks fantastic in behind that. Again, the upper level wind lines are coming in here basically from the Pacific Ocean. Then we get into Monday, Halloween, nice looking. Another trough is trying to dig out there to the west of us, and that's going to help to increase the humidity. A couple of disturbances on Tuesday gives us another chance for some rain, and this thing is just going to kind of sit out there. So that's going to look like keep us in the chance of rain as we go into the middle part of next week. So forecast today 70 at noon sunny skies high temperature then makes it up to 79 beautiful beautiful day open up the windows today and then tomorrow yeah it is going to be on the cool side once again we're going to be down to 54 degrees up to 78 and that front moves on through here a couple of uh, showers maybe a thunderstorm 
That'll be early on. Well, I jumped past that early on. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to show the spider again. Yes. We are going to have a good looking weekend. Uh, low 70s on Saturday, mid 70s Sunday, and then up close to 80 on Halloween and the chance of rain next week. Fido's forecast looks awesome. Yes. We love that spider. Overall, day. take the spider for a walk. Just so. take a <laughs> walk around the spider. Yes. 554, 48 degrees. Made out of. Yeah, very nice. Looking at your winning lotto numbers, pick three, seven, eight, one, fireball eight, daily four, zero, six, three, five, fireball one. Cash five numbers, four, five, 20, 26, 29. Mega millions, uh, by the way, a Powerball tonight is like $700 million, but mega numbers 21, 30, 35, 45, 66, mega ball 21, mega plier was three. Good luck from everybody here at GMSA. Early voting is underway. We have you covered with a voter guide for the midterm elections. You can take a look at polling hours, hours uh, at the uh, and the full ballot. Lo oh, locations and hours and the full ballot ksat.com click on this article election day of course is november 8th well coming up right here on gmsa a, a bug apocalypse what's causing so many bugs to die and why experts are saying uh, the issue is that is the issue it's not good and new details of what police are learning about the 19 year old gunman who opened fire at his former high school in st louis missouri Stephen is tracking traffic on Transguide. A busy morning at 281 North at Loop 1604. We're back after this break. Remembering what they're saying to check to see if you and your family have been affected by it. And taking a look outside with live cam, feels like October. We're starting at 48 degrees, nice and cool. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, October 26th. Thanks for joining us. Rise and shine. Uh, and Mike said earlier, if you're not awake, all you have to do is just step outside yeah. and that'll wake you up just that, like that. You'll snap to attention for sure. It is brisk out there. We started out right around 50. We've already dropped a couple of degrees. Mike Oster Hage. Yeah. And, and 40s and 30s in the hill country. So it is pretty darn cold out there. After that front move through, the dry air came on in. Huge warm up throughout the day and got the camera pointing off to these because it eh, should be. Well, probably another 45 temperature in the 50s up there at Canyon Lake, but then 38 right now at Comfort and Bernie Stage has also dropped down to 39 degrees. Molds on the moderate side, low amounts, ragweed, juniper. Update account comes out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Temperatures will continue to drop down a few more degrees. We'll bottom out at 45 this morning, so definitely on the cool side of things by a good 10, 12, 13 degrees or so, kind of across the board. And then huge warm up will already gain 25 by by noon getting up to 70 plenty of sunshine out there wind is really not going to be a factor today so just get out and enjoy this beautiful weather today 79 for a high temperature right about normal get 30 close to 35 degrees as far as the the warm up from the low to the high today it's a fantastic day we do have some more rain chances we do have another front moving on through here we'll talk about the last weekend of october already and of course take a look at the uh, halloween trick or treating forecast plus a really great pet picture coming up here and just so you're gonna love this one traffic authority Stephen, what's going on sir you know mike it was quiet for quite a while but we've entered that busy hour 6 a.m and uh we already have those flashing lights out there at 410 at starcrest let's go ahead and get you that wide look at trans guide now as we bring the camera in and show you that unfortunately uh, we do have at least three of those first responders out there and uh, you know i shouldn't say unfortunately this is good news because obviously the person that is involved in this incident is getting the help but we notice that we see that off in the shoulder lane very dark out there and traffic is already picking up near 410. Uh, obviously, this is something that drivers need to be on the lookout for. First responders get out of their vehicles. They inspect the scene. They try to clear up this crash. So we have to make sure that we give them plenty of room, move over or slow down. Let's get you to the map because it is quiet everywhere else, but be on the lookout again. That crash right there along 410. Our map has put it on two icons, but we can tell you that it's right there at 410 eastbound at Perrin Bidal Road. The good news is, although we are seeing traffic moving, it's really not causing a slowdown because it's off in the shoulder lane. So as a reminder, just be on the lookout there. But right now, this is the only major incident to report at this point. But we are going to keep a close eye on things and have those updates for you throughout the morning. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. 
San Antonio police say it appears a driver in a crash was intoxicated. That crash happened on the city's west side on West Commerce near Northwest 36th Street. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Have police released any information about the person who was killed, Katrina? Well, what we know from the is that he was a man in his 20s, but so far police have not released his name. Now, the car hit that utility pole there behind me, apparently causing some damage that CPS energy crews have been working to repair all morning. The police went right to work, giving the driver in this case a sobriety test right here at the scene. They ended up taking that man into custody, and they told us he also was in his 20s. The crash happened shortly after midnight. Police say the driver hit the pole, wrapping the car around it and trapping the passenger inside the car. Firefighters had to cut that car open to get him out. Now, the passenger, who again also was in his 20s, was taken to a hospital where he died. And police say it looks like the driver here will be charged with intoxication manslaughter. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, the Converse Police Department confirmed the arrest of a 12-year-old for making threats to shoot up an IDEA school. Police say on October 20th, a concerned parent reported hearing from a student that they were told not to go to school the next day. Witnesses say the 12-year-old said he had an AR-15 and ammo that fit inside his backpack and was going to shoot up the school. Police found no weapons, but say these threats are not taken lightly. This is a second involving terroristic threats made at a school this year. More than three weeks since the shooting of 17-year-old Eric Cantu, his family is asking for prayers that their son survives. They also say they want justice in the case and some sort of change so that this type of shooting won't happen again. Cantu was eating at a San Antonio McDonald's parking lot when former officer James Brennan fired at Cantu's car multiple times. Cantu's parents say his fight in the hospital keeps going back and forth between medications and a ventilator keeping their son alive. They explained he was hit by at least four, bullet, four bullets that ricocheted through his body and that a single bullet remains in Eric near his heart. Sleeping, what we think is a peaceful sleep, to hallucinations and raising his hands and trying to press the pedals to the car and, and pushing gun symbols. These are the things we have to see daily that no one has seen. Former Officer Brennan is facing two charges of aggravated assault by a public servant. Contu's family will be on Good Morning America today, saying they not only want justice in the criminal sense, but in the civil and legislative as well. You think it was racial profiling? I think he had that in his mind frame. I think he already had a preset thought about who that person was and how he was going to take care of that problem. We want justice, yes, but we want Eric to live. We want Eric to live to tell his story. You can watch that full interview with John Quinones on GMA starting at 7 o'clock right here on KSAT after GMSA. Federal investigators in San Antonio making a big announcement about a cybersecurity crime ring. Yesterday, federal officials say a Ukrainian man is accused of helping operate a piece of malware known as Raccoon Info Stealer. Investigators say the program was leased to criminals to secretly steal personal information. You can see if your data was stolen by visiting the address on your screen. We also have a link on KSAT.com. Just click on this article. We are learning more about the 19-year-old gunman who killed two people and wounded several others at his former high school up in St. Louis, Missouri. Police say he had an AR-15 style rifle, over 600 rounds of ammunition, and more than a dozen high-capacity magazines. Investigators say the shooter left a note saying his personal struggles led to, quote, the perfect storm for a mass shooter, end quote. The gunman, who graduated from Central Visual and Performing Arts High School last year, died at a hospital after a gun battle with police. Authorities credited locked doors and a quick law enforcement response with preventing more deaths at that school. The Universal Studios Beijing Resort announcing that its theme park, City Walk Shopping Zone, and two hotels will be temporarily closed. The company made the announcement on social media platform Weibo, saying that the decision was made, quote, due to the needs of epidemic prevention and control. Though it did not say when exactly the park would reopen again, the news comes amid a reported rise in COVID-19 cases recently. The Chinese capital recorded 20 local cases on Wednesday, 
According to authorities, a slight uptick from the 18 that were reported on Tuesday. Right now, 608, 48 degrees. And what doctors see are seeing across the country involving respiratory illnesses, what they're advising coming up. And after the break, we sit down with Eric Hernandez to talk about the local trial of Jessica Briones. And if you like the cold weather, enjoy. It's 48 degrees out there and even colder in the hill country. We'll be right back. The trial of a San Antonio woman accused of the murder of her four-year-old daughter, Olivia Briones, back in 2017 continues. Our court reporter, Erica Hernandez, joins us now with more on that story. Hey, Erica, thanks hey, for guys, joining us. Hey, guys, this morning. Hey, this trial is entering its third week. Did anyone expect it to go this long? No, it, it's been a surprise to all of us, especially those who are covering it, how long it's taken. We were told initially maybe a week, a week and a half. Here we are, week three, and the defense is barely getting the case. Where are we at in the trial now and how much longer could it go, Erica? So they've been doing long days. Um, the last couple of days, they've been staying past six o'clock to make sure the state rested this week. The state has rested and now it's in the defense's hands. Um, we're being told there can be anywhere from two to five people that take the chance to stand for the defense. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. We're being told this will end this week. The judge is like, this has to end this week, even if we have to come in Saturday and Sunday. And Erica, so far, have you seen what theory the defense may have in this case into what happened to four-year-old Olivia? So we haven't really seen their case be presented quite yet, but just from the cross-examination, they're really trying to emphasize that you know she was a single mother. She didn't have a lot of money and the little girl was very clumsy. Mom could have been very clumsy as well. This is kind of the, they even had, and, and this is why it's kind of dragged on a lot during cross-examination of the lead detective. They had her replay the entire uh, video of the interrogation over to the jury. They had seen pieces of it, but he wanted the whole thing played out. So that was another five to 10 hours just sitting there of the jury seeing, you know, this interrogation video in its entirety. And we're being told he could play the other video within his defense coming up. All right, for all the latest on this trial of Jessica Briones and everything going on in the courts, head to KSAT.com. Our courts page also sign up for Erica's open court newsletter. Erica, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, time check is about 614. Let's get another look at the roadways. We saw this crash was reported by Fort at 410 at Starcrest. You can see first responders have been out there for a little while now, about 15 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. But that crash actually off in the shoulder lane, so it's not impacting any of the lanes that we see there. In fact, traffic's moving pretty normal. Uh, but the good news is with this crash, we are seeing a wrecker out there. So uh, this could wrap up in the next few minutes or so. But be on the lookout because those first responders are still out there working to clear this scene. And as always, we hope everyone is okay. Let's tell you where that's at because uh, while the map is pretty quiet, we still have it here pinpointed at 410 eastbound at Perrin Vital Road. Uh, no issues there in terms of delays. You are seeing a lot of green out there, but nonetheless, make sure to move over or slow down if you can. Let's get you to some road work taking place along Loop 410, but this time on the west side of San Antonio, we are going to see that repairs uh, there along 410, which has obviously been current, and we're going to see that at least up until October 30. First, that is next Monday. That is Halloween, but be on the lookout. Look out, late night owls, early bird commuters. It was nine in the evening at five in the morning. The exit Rampton Valley High Drive will be closed. Well, let's get you back here to Transguide 410 at Starcrest. Hopefully, we'll have a better update in the next few minutes. But because we see a tow truck out there, uh, looks like by maybe before the show wraps, we'll have this uh, situation cleared up. But nonetheless, we'll keep an eye on it. And this is one of those mornings where you get in the car and the the tire mm -hmm. thing yeah. goes off. Yeah. yeah. Grab a jacket. Won't need it by the afternoon. So, but it's chilly out there. Mm -hmm. Might want to warm up your car a little bit as the bus rolls across us there. We're going to drop down to 45 here in town. We'll just uh, right around the sun just after it comes up. And then later on this afternoon, huge warm up. We are going to be gaining a good 30, 35 degrees or so. Plenty of sunshine, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day today. Enjoy it because we do have some changes the next couple of days. All right, you were asking about what to dress up as yeah. for Halloween. Yeah. You said Scarecrow? A Scarecrow, okay. Pinocchio, I uh, can't give away the rest. Scarecrow because here then would be the person that you can go Okay. Trick or treating. Oh, 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 o
Wow, I'm gonna look take at a, that. I'm going to walk over here. And, and actually, it looks like look. the dog's enjoying that, too. Right. Yeah. It's a Dorothy Toto combo kit. Yeah, that's... With the shoes and everything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Adorable. <laughs> Folks, if you're not looking at your screen, take oh, a second and look at this. Goodness. I love this. And the, the, the tilt of the head and the expression on the face of the dog. <laughs> Is, if you can see it right now, the three of them are over there at that large storyteller screen. I'm just They're really at. analyzing it's a, this. Wow. It's a, I wish I had a picture of that. It's so okay, cute. Th thank you very much. Don't forget to uh, scan that QR code and you can download some of the, uh, send us some of your KSAC Connect pictures of maybe your dog with ruby slippers on. So uh, we don't have any glow of the sunrise as of yet. That should be in about the next 20, 25 minutes. We'll start to see that. Sun won't be coming up for about another hour and a half. 49 here in town, 39 now Bernie stage 41 Bull Verde and just dropped to 47 in divine upper 30s portions of the hill country. Big, big warm up throughout the day. Lots of clear skies, lots of sunshine. Like I said, we'll bottom out at 45 and then get up into the upper 60s, 70, already 25 degrees warmer at noon and then upper 70s. Beautiful, beautiful day and it's not going to Cool down. It will cool down somewhat, but not as quickly once the the sun goes down. It's because we're going to start to see the humidity try and come back in here. So still very, very pleasant today. Very low humidity. But then by tomorrow afternoon, humidity really shoots up. Then the front comes through, drops it back down. I mean, just this huge wave right here, this roller coaster. And for the weekend, we're still going to have fairly pleasant uh, humidity conditions out there. So it's going to be really, really nice. Pleasant mornings, nice afternoons this weekend. Again, we do have the chance for some rain coming on in here later tomorrow. Maybe a couple of sprinkles tomorrow evening, but more like overnight and late tomorrow evening into Friday morning showers, even a couple of thunderstorms, and that's as the next front moves on through here. Perhaps some of those lingering into late morning and early afternoon. Then again, we clear out in the afternoon. It's going to be windy on Friday afternoon and really, really nice. So it should be setting us up for a beautiful, beautiful night for a Friday night football around here. Here's the low that moved through the other day. Wind lines, upper level wind lines in behind it coming in here from the west. So it's kind of a Pacific front, not pulling down from Canada. The next low develops. This is the one that moves on through here. Gives us a chance for some rain again in behind that more Pacific air with that drier air that comes in here for the weekend. And that will continue on basically into Monday as well. Then another one of those fronts moves through by the middle of next week. 70 at noon today, sunny skies, high temperature up to 79. Gorgeous, gorgeous day. It was so nice to be outside yesterday. Tomorrow we start off really pretty. Lots of clear skies. Clouds increase throughout the day. The front moves through. Then late tomorrow night, a couple of showers, thunderstorms, even a couple of stronger thunderstorms can't be ruled out. Um, We'll just have to kind of keep an eye on that, obviously, early on Friday. And then the weekend looks nice, kind of coolish on Saturday. 80 Monday and another rain chance on Tuesday. It's nice to see rain come and mm -hmm. go from the forecast. Yeah. You know, a quarter, half an inch of rain. The, the majority of rain looks like it's going to be further up to the northeast, up toward Austin tomorrow night, late into early Friday. But we'll have some of these showers around here, too. So Chances okay. are good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. And now to the growing concern over what doctors are seeing in hospitals across this country. The triple threat of COVID, flu, and the virus, RSV, all hitting at once. 14 states and Washington, D.C., with hospital pediatric beds at more than 80% capacity already. Alex Perche has more. This is becoming a common sight at hospitals across the country. Beds and emergency rooms crowded with sick young patients. We have a 181-bed hospital, and last night, Virtually every bed was full. Doctors telling us the rise is due to something dubbed a triple dimmick. COVID, the flu, and a seasonal virus that mostly affects children called RSV. The good news is for two of the three, we have vaccines that are highly effective at preventing serious illness, COVID and flu. But thus far, hospitalizations have been on the rise. Nationally, pediatric bed occupancy is the highest it's been in two years, with 75% of an estimated 40,000 beds filled. That's a 4% increase from just last week, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We're looking at and we're really tracking healthcare capacity very, very closely across pediatric hospitals. Um, and obviously, if hospitals need help, we will step in and help them uh, to make sure that all kids across America get the care they need. The greatest percentage of visits for flu-like illness are for those under five years old. Patients like five-month-old Bentley Phillips, who spent the night hospitalized with RSV in Green Bay, Wisconsin. 
It started with the wheezing. He progressed so fast. It's not too late to get your kids vaccinated, saying that 95% of the hospitalizations there overnight were for children who did not have the flu vaccine and or had incomplete COVID vaccines. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. It's now 621, 48 degrees. And coming up, Nate Earl wants to become the youngest climber ever. He plans on achieving that coming up next. Why hide your skin? If Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixin helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixin, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Serious allergic reaction. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA First Look, meet the eight-year-old climber ascending one of the most challenging summits in the world, Yosemite's El Capitan. This is an epic adventure with my dad. Sam and his dad, Joe, speaking to GMA from their campsite, a thousand feet up on the side of El Cap's granite walls after completing day one of their vertical climb. The Colorado Springs father and son say they trained for a year and a half to scale the 3,000 foot high rock formation. Way to go. That's two and a half times the size of the Empire State Building, hanging by their fingers or anchors the entire time and carrying water and sleeping gear with them. You have to haul up all of your tent. can be trip. We still got a long way to go. And we'll have much more on this potentially record-setting climb coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Twitter's main tweeters are flying away. According to documents obtained by Reuters, the 10% of users who generate 90% of tweets have been in decline since the pandemic. Elon Musk is set to finalize the deal to buy Twitter on Friday. Samsung has rolled out a new privacy feature to protect your personal information while your phone is being repaired. Maintenance mode makes photos, messages, and other private data inaccessible. And it prevents technicians from seeing what apps you have installed. It's now on select Galaxy phones with One UI 5. And finally, SpaceX says its Starlink for RV satellite service will be available for moving vehicles starting in December. Right now, it's meant for stationary vehicles in remote places like campsites. The new service will cost $2,500 before a monthly one. And time now, 627 and a cold 48 degrees for now. A fire overnight left one family without a home. What they're telling police. Checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Quite a bit of damage here on the west side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say the driver is headed to jail. Outside with live cam, the sun is not yet up. Pick a jacket, any jacket. It will help this morning. You will need at least one layer as we're down into the 40s, and that's here in the city. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, October 26th. Thanks for joining us. I like that pick any jacket at this point. I'm glad we're getting some use out of it this week. Of course, it's even colder out in the elevations of the Texas Hill Country. Mike Ostrade joins us now, and we're imagining it is a morning where the fireplaces might be going. Yes, indeed. That Oh, that sounds like a real nice idea, right? Yeah. Big bowl of oatmeal, hot chocolate going on here. So and then you won't need your jacket by later on this afternoon. Almost shorts and uh, flip flops weather later on today because we're going to have a, a huge warm up. You know, whenever we see about 30 degrees between the low and the high, good indication that there's some very dry air out there and it's going to be even more so than that. So it's a 
Uh, no glow of the sunrise as of yet, probably in about 10, 15 minutes. 49 out there at the airport, but uh, 10 below normal. Dew points at 38, very dry air, clear skies, light wind, perfect situation to have these temperatures continue to drop down. 37 right now, Comfort, Bernie Stage 39, 46 at both Randolph as well as Port S.A., Stinson and uh, Stinson in the airport, both at 49 degrees. Mold is on the moderate side, light amounts ragweed and uh, juniper. That's starting to show up. Update account comes out in about an hour or so. Clear, cold this morning. This afternoon, sunny. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Yesterday, I went and voted, even waiting out in line outside. It was fantastic just to be out in this beautiful, beautiful weather. And then tomorrow, we start off with clear skies. Clouds going to increase. We do have a chance of rain. Late, late tomorrow night, more likely in the first portion of the day on Friday up through perhaps late morning, noontime, and it is going to be windy and behind that. Then we're going to be clearing on out on Friday, and it's going to be fantastic for football on Friday. Weekend looks great overall. We are going to be seeing uh, maybe a couple of extra clouds here and there, but nice. Especially. Saturday, then Halloween still looks great. Another chance of rain by the middle part of next week. Get all the details sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything big going on? Well, we did have that issue, Mike, uh, near 14 at Starcrest. We showed you this shot from Transguide as we went to commercial break. And if you have been with us, and we hope you have, because uh, we did have that crash. It was off in the shoulder lane, and you can see now this shot at Transguide is showing a smooth commute for drivers in the area. So that's good news. It looks like that crash is already cleared out, but let's get you to the map because it wasn't really causing any issues. We saw it off in the shoulder lane. First responders were out there along with the tow truck eastbound right there near Perrin Bidal, but we're going to clear that from our map a little bit later on and uh, thankfully no issues in that area for drivers. But of course, we hope the driver that was involved in this crash is doing OK. Uh, let's give you a wide look at the map and we do see that there is a little bit of a buildup taking place there near 35 southbound as you approach Live Oak from 1604 near 1604. Uh, that's always expected. This is that hour where or half hour I should say where we see a lot more folks out on the roadways. So by the show end, by the time the show ends, we're going to have a pretty much a different situation out on the roadways. But right now I don't see any delays. If you are traveling in from New Braunfels, it's not too awful. 31 minutes on I-35 southbound. We are seeing that buildup on 281 southbound. If you are traveling in from Bulverde, but nothing too bad. 29 minutes at this hour, and it does look like that journey from Bernie in the eastbound lanes of I-10 looks to be about 24 minutes. But of course, let's get you back on rotation here as you can take a one last look around town. There is 410 at Babcock. Traffic is already moving in a lot of these spots and of course, we'll be watching things closely. We hope you do the same. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. A driver is spending at least the morning in jail after a deadly overnight crash. San Antonio police say his passenger was killed when the car hit a utility pole and wrapped around it. This happened on West Commerce near Northwest 36th Street. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. We understand police believe the driver was intoxicated. Katrina. Well, that's right. In fact, it looks like he's facing a charge of intoxication manslaughter related to the death of his passenger. The police gave that driver who's in his 20s a sobriety test right here at the scene, then took him into custody. The crash happened shortly after midnight. The officers told us that firefighters had to cut the car open to get to the passenger. That man, who also was in his 20s, died at a hospital. The crash also caused damage to the utility pole, but it does not appear that there were any power outages as a result. Well, up until just a few minutes ago, CPS Energy crews were working here to repair that damaged pole, and it looks like they just wrapped up their work because they did leave the scene. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. A family without a home this morning after an overnight fire in Vaughn Army. This happened around 11 last night in the 7800 block of Rockport Road. The Bear County Fire Department and Lytle Fire Department responded to a home completely engulfed in flames. BCSO was told a man was staying at the house and he may have started the fire intentionally. Family members told fire officials he started fires twice before. That man took off on foot and was arrested. The house is a total loss. A girl is in the hospital this morning after a drive-by shooting on the city's east side. This happened around 1130 last night in the 4900 block of Creekmore Drive. San Antonio police say a female in her teens was transported to Van C with gunshot wounds to her ankle. Police say she was inside her home when a blue vehicle drove by and someone inside fired shots. She is expected to be okay. An investigation continues.
In Uvalde, the race for County Commissioner Precinct 2 is heating up. One write-in candidate making waves now is Javier Casares. His daughter Jackie was killed at Robb Elementary. Even though he never saw himself as a politician, he said he promised her that he was going to fight for changes. Casares says his platform is simple. He is fighting to keep other kids safe and for more rigorous police training. I can't promise anything because I, I've, like I said, I'm not in that position yet. But I'm going to do my best to do my part versus promising somebody that I don't want to make a promise I can't keep. Everybody in the world saw what happened that day, and, and he was in that video as well. Now, the current incumbent is Mariano Pargas Jr. He's held the position for over a decade, originally was running unopposed. Pargas was serving as the interim police chief for Uvalde's police department May 24th. He has since been on leave. Now, we emailed Mariano Pargas several times to speak about his reelection, but we have not gotten a response back yet. There are two other write-in candidates for County Commissioner Precinct 2 in Uvalde, Julio Valdez and Diana Olvedo Carew. Valdez declined an interview, and you'll hear from Olvedo Carut later tonight on the Night Beat at 10. And San Antonio is home to the biggest Dia de los Muertos events in the country, and this weekend Muertos Fest will honor the memories of those who have passed on. But did you know there is also a museum where you can learn about the holiday year round? It's hidden on the top floor of the Fiesta store at North Star. The museum has five rooms, one main gallery and custom altars. Many of the items come from a private collection of artists in Mexico. You also see many altars at Muertos Fest. It all kicks off Saturday, October 29th. It says Hemisphere and it is free to attend. Scan the QR code for more information. Alicia Barrera. Stephanie Jimenez will be there. You can also catch our primetime special, which will air Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT, KSAT.com, and KSAT+. Plus. As we approach Halloween, San Antonio is joining in on the Halloween spirit. Check out the hundreds of students that put on quite the performance at Gustafson Stadium yesterday. These zombies dance to Michael Jackson's Thriller as part of the annual Thriller Mill. So the event puts on a show and aims to fight hunger by collecting food for the San Antonio Food Bank. Teachers say it's something students take pride in. Oh, it's electric. The kids are so excited. They have such a great time. It's, some of them, you know, it's the first time they've ever been on a big football field. So it's always a good time. 48 degrees. And coming up, here's a look at what experts are seeing a decline in a bug presence and why they say it isn't a good sign. And welcome back at 643, a bug apocalypse between widespread pesticide use and drought. The executive director of the National Butterfly Center in the Rio Grande Valley says our pollinators are dying rapidly and it's not good. KSAT Sarah Costa spoke with the director of the center who explains why we need our insects to survive. If the insects disappear, we won't be far behind. The director of the National Butterfly Center, Mariana White, says the matter of our bugs and pollinators dying out right now is much more urgent than people realize. Right now we are experiencing what scientists call an insect. Past few years, several studies have shown that at least 40% of the world's insects are dying at a rapid rate. Some research shows that 90% of certain species have been wiped out. And what that means for humans is higher temperatures, more terrible floods, worsening air quality, all of the um, worst aspects of climate change. So what do bugs have to do with climate change? She explains that our pollinators, especially the butterflies, combat climate change by keeping our vegetation alive. That butterflies pollinate shrubs and trees. All of those things, that green vegetation, is what keeps our planet cool. It reduces erosion and improves air quality. It filters water and produces clean air. She says two big factors are hurting our pollinators. One is a severe drought we are experiencing here in South Texas. We saw it firsthand at the center. And you can see how the drought is impacting right here at the Butterfly Center, usually filled with blooms. A lot of these native plants just trying to survive. 
The other factor is pesticide use, especially through wide use in farming. Pesticides are killing all of the insects because that's what pesticides are designed to do. They are designed to poison bugs, all of them. Wright says it's urgent we stop using pesticides immediately and combat climate change to help not just keep our pollinators alive, but us as well. Life on Earth literally depends on pollinators. That's butterflies, bees, birds, bats, and other insects. They also are the basis of the food system for all living things. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 645, 48 degrees. And looking at our trans guy cameras, things look okay, but let's go ahead and check in with Steven. For the most part, things have been pretty quiet as we get a quick look around town. We did have a few incidents that popped up near 410. That's already done and over with. Uh, but 281 there, you can see at North Loop 1604, traffic's already moving into town, and that's a pretty busy spot. We tend to see some delays around this point, but just be on the lookout. Although these trans guide cameras aren't catching any major issues, we are noticing a little bit of a slowdown here along I-35. Those southbound lanes near Loop 1604, notice that our map is picking up that traffic is moving at 25 miles per hour. So that's pretty slow for that area of town. You have to watch out. Uh, I'm going to call our friends at Transcott a little bit later to see if we can get a shot of the conditions. And maybe there's something out there that uh, hasn't been reported yet. But nonetheless, just be prepared for that slowdown if you are coming in from New Braunfels, perhaps into the Alamo City. Uh, but that's really going to be the case right now. A lot of those slowdowns are what's expected. You can see it there along US 90, usual spot near 1604. And of course, over on the northwest side of 1604 near Helotus. So just be prepared for that. Uh, right now, we are in morning rush, so people will be getting out on the roadways as the minutes do pass. But also, as we have to mention, because this is going to be taking place later this morning around 7, we have that utility work near FM 1535. Northwest Military Highway uh, begins uh, again at 7 a.m. Should wrap on Friday, October 28th. This is going to last all the way up until 6 in the evening. So uh, just be on the lookout for that single lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. But let's get it back to Trans Guide where things have been moving. Just make sure to take it easy. It is morning rush. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. So we've had busy skeletons, and now they're mm -hmm. they're on strike. They're, yeah, they're, I guess they're, they're on strike. They're, yeah, they're they're on strike. Here, skinniest here's, picket line you've ever seen. <laughs> here's some of the demands that they are making. <laughs> okay, no more sleeping on the garage floor. Right. No more cheap duct tape. Yeah, I'm yeah, cheap duct tape. Yeah. Uh, easier Wi-Fi passwords. That one I'm all on board for. Yes. Right. Hong so, for skeletons. Because they are getting worked to the bone. Oh, obviously. that's a good one. And the union rep is the T-Rex skeleton over there by the witty. Right. As it says there. So. Uh, a viewer commented that these were a bunch of boneheads, and he's not wrong. Ah, <laughs> I like that one. So, so cute. <laughs> easier Wi-Fi passwords. Yeah, that would be, that would be very nice. So. Yeah. And not having a computer ask you if you're a robot, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that, Mike. Just throwing that in there. All right, there's the glow of the uh, sunrise this morning. Obviously, lots of clear skies. That's what, uh, one of the ingredients allowing temperatures to really drop down. 37 now, Bernie stage. Same thing going up by Comfort. Kerrville, 44 Seguin, and uh, 47 down the road at Divine. We're going to warm up very nicely. We'll drop down to 45 degrees here in town. All said and done. And then gain 25 already by noon, up to 70. Plenty of sunshine. Just a fantastic day. Open up the windows. I was driving around the windows open yesterday. It was so, so wonderful. Guys, starting off tomorrow, and then clouds move in. Maybe, just maybe a stray light little shower tomorrow evening, but the better chance of rain comes in here overnight, late Thursday into Friday. And so you can see the majority of that is going to be further up to the north and to the northeast of us, so by Austin and north of there. And that's going to be clearing on out by the afternoon on Friday. Windy conditions and fantastic setting up for a football on Friday night. As far as some rainfall estimates, 10th quarter of an inch of rain, San Antonio off to the west, and then heavier amounts further up to the northeast. But you get a thunderstorm, and you can see some localized heavier amounts on top of that. Also, Storm Prediction Center is already kind of flagging western portions of the hill country for a couple of isolated, strong to potentially severe storms. And this, again, would be late tomorrow night. That's something. that we are definitely going to keep an eye on. But then, like I said, things clear out quite nicely. So with these fall fronts moving on through here, now with a bit more frequency, we had one Monday, one then tomorrow night, and it looks like another one's going to move through by next week. 70 at noon today. Sunny skies, high
Getting off cool again tomorrow, not as cold as the humidity starts to work its way back on in here. Maybe it's tolerable for Halloween. Yeah, we can yeah do as long that. as the humidity stays down there. So. Well, how about them caramel apples? Thank you very much, Mike. 650. That sounds really good. <laughs> right? Yes, it does. 10 till 7, 48 degrees. <laughs> Let's look back outside with a live cam. Starting cold for most of the city, especially out in the hill country. Bundle up, but you'll lose those layers later this afternoon. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up, the countdown to midterm elections less than two weeks away. A big showdown in Pennsylvania last night in the Senate race. There is more money pours into the state that could help decide the control of the Senate. Also this morning, the alarming new numbers about pediatric respiratory cases with hospital beds in some states now filling up. That's coming up right here on GMA. San Antonio police say an overnight crash is now a criminal case. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They arrested the driver of that car after his passenger was killed. The police did give the driver who's in his 20s a sobriety test within moments of that crash. It happened shortly after midnight here on the west side on West Commerce near Northwest 36th Street. Officers told us that the passenger, a man who's also in his 20s, had to be cut free from the car. He was trapped after it wrapped around a utility pole. The driver again was taken into custody and it looks like he will be faced, he will be facing a charge of intoxication manslaughter. So far, police have not released any names. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, ch time check right now, 5 till 7, 47 degrees. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Well, things are moving, but uh, we are seeing some slowdowns around town. Let's just give you one last look at Transguide 281 at Hildebrand. Things are fine. Uh, thankfully, no major issues have been reported, but just check out 410 at Gulebra, where we do have traffic that is coming to a stop there, and that is normal. We have that busy time. Morning rush, 35 southbound Loop 1604, as, as well as over here off Loop 1604 northbound near Hosman Road. But just remember to drive safe, Mike. 48 here in town right now, a mid-30s parts of the hill country going out I-10. Big warm-up throughout the day. We're going to Make it up to 79 tomorrow then. Humidity increases as do clouds throughout the day. Chance of rain overnight into early Friday. Good looking weekend. Good looking trick or treat forecast. And speaking of beautiful, wow. look yeah. at that sunrise. Gonna be grab your sunglasses along with a heavy coat. I know the fall change, uh, the time change rather, is yeah. creeping up on us. Uh -oh. isn't it? it is a week from Sunday. So Sunday. that's the 6th. I think yes. Yeah. Yes. So oh my goodness. before you go to bed on that Saturday, but yes, yeah, the it first is. weekend of November. That's right. We will prepare. All right. Yes. From our morning show family to yours, have a great day. We'll see you back here at nine.